So this is one of the fields in that uh, in that chart from a few slides ago. This is one of the fields. It's called Gulf of Mexico Field X. Okay, and so on the left hand side is sort of the topographic map of the field and shows the well locations. So uh, these are different. The 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 uh, squares are, are platforms. The circles are other. Uh, places where wells were drilled. And these are all the production histories from all of these wells. And there's some triangles in there as well. So these are the production histories for all of those wells from a time period from about 1985 to about uh, 2001 or 2003, something like that. Uh, 2001 and a half, I guess, is the last data point. And kind of a couple observations. One of the th first things is that if you look at all of these, you know, these are those same wells. So if you just follow like black triangle, there's a single well, right? If you follow it through time, you can kind of approximate its slope. You know, filled square is a well, you follow it through time. Empty square is a well, empty circle is a well. And you follow its production history through time. And the first thing is even though these are different wells, they sort of all follow the same slope, right? Even these over here, which tended to start off with a higher pore pressure, but they follow the same slope. So for the most part, uh, you can say that these guys, um, is these, these wells in this region are highly connected, right? It's not very compartmentalized. So it's a, it's a highly connected system. But this guy, uh, from this, then we can uh, determine our A value, if you will, and you can look at, now initially I guess there wasn't good data for S3, right, but starting in 1997, then, then we had some data for S3, and then, and then 98 and 2001, so this is real data for, you know, real measured A, and so while there wasn't uh, initial data back in the 80s, if you extrapolate back to where, uh, well, the pore pressure was originally about 80 MPA, right? So if you look here, in 85, the pore pressure was originally about 80 MPA. So there's another, I guess, thing. Th this, this is significant depletion, right? So we're down below 20 here. So we're over 60 megapascal depletion in 20 years. Um, so if you take this line and you extrapolate it back to when the pore pressure was 80, on this uh, stress space or reservoir space plot, you can see at that time, we were right on the cusp of normal faulting, or essentially in a critically stressed state. Right? So you're right there on the normal faulting, and then you begin to produce and you move away from the line. Right? So in this case, this is one scenario where the depletion helped you. Right? I mean, it, it, it certainly didn't hurt. You, you, you moved away from promoting any faulting, and so you don't have problems with casing you know, or, or gas leaks or anything like that. Right? So this is one example where good things happened due to depletion from a mechanical standpoint, right? from a mechanic standpoint. And um, this, is the, this is the opposite case. So this is a platform in the North Sea. and um, this is actually an anticline formation, so probably remember from geology, so sort of a formation like this. So this is the this is the crest, and and this is the flank, and I'm not sure why uh, the pluses aren't showing up, but there should be. If you look in the book, there should be some pluses up here in this area from the f associated with the flank. Then the dots are the crest. Well. You can see here that a lot of the points are below this line, which is an indication of, uh, you know, basically faulting, active faulting, and that is occurring in this formation along the crest. Uh, there are lots of normal faults, and so the, the the reservoir space plot is consistent with that. It's it's it, it does indicate you would expect promotion of normal faulting for anything below this line, 
and they are occurring. I mean, the, the real data shows that this is occurring. And this, this particular formation has a tremendous problem with gas leaks. So the gas is actually escaping from these normal faults, as well as lots of, um, you know, busted casing and other things just from the normal fault. Right. So uh, sometimes it can help, and sometimes it can hurt. Again, you know, here we're talking about from a mechanics standpoint. Production, you know, the actual compaction drive and other things, that's, that's another subject. So, I think we kind of get into some equations here, and maybe I don't want to do that with five minutes to go, because, yeah, because then we won't look at it again for a week, so maybe we'll just stop here. But uh, we're going to look at stress rotations with depletion. Uh, you can actually have along, in near faults, you can have stresses reorient, so in other words, your, your, your SH min and SH max can actually reverse. Uh, you know, they can swap places. And uh, that can actually be a good thing because particularly in, if you, uh, well, when we talk about hydraulic fracture, I mean, we could, you could think of one of these faults as a hydraulic fracture, right? And initially the formation was, had one stress orientation which caused the hydraulic fracture to grow in one direction. Then you deplete the well a little while and if you promote stress reversal, now you can go out and refracture, and you can get the fracture to grow in another direction, which is you know, beneficial for stimulation. And quite frankly, in this market, uh, this might be what we're doing for the next few years, is refracturing wells, particularly in like the Eagle Ford Shale, where the, the principal stresses are pretty close to one another. So you can, they will reverse with some time of depletion. So we'll, we'll talk about sort of how we can estimate the stress reversal and um, I guess next week.